Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. The discussion for today is on the second topic that is on labor supply. And the following is the overview of the entire discussion based on the structure of the textbook that we are using. I will not go through each of this, but in general, what we will do is when we talk about labor supply, our focus first is to look at the concept of how we want to measure the labor force and under measuring the labor force, there are some concepts such as hidden unemployment and also uh, some factual facts about labor supply. I think more important or central at the very beginning of the discussion is about the concept of the individual workers decision in making the uh, decision to supply their skills and knowledge in the job market therefore we are talk we are talking about a workforce preference idea here and in this context we are looking at the following issue the shape of the indifference curve this is a very micro level analysis of labor supply. And then based on this indifference curve analysis, we will add the budget constraint decision done by a worker. So we have the budget constraint. And from this, we will see how the workers would make their decision whether work or not to work. And if they want to work, how many hours they will work and how many hours they will allocate for leisures. So that's basically what I want to touch at the very beginning. The rest of the structures we will cover in other discussions. The following is a chart showing some concept related to uh, determinants of labor supply. I have explained to you in the last discussion about the idea of getting to the last box here, where this is the total available labor services available in the economy, or this is what we call as the workforce in the labor market. They are ready and I will not repeat again the, this point, but when we say available labor in the market, we are focusing on quantity and also quality of the workers. The following are some statistics related to the numbers that we have in the case of Malaysia. And another thing about statistics related to the labor force, we need to keep updating the information because this type of statistics is a regularly updated statistics. All right, let's move on to the discussion on the workers' preference. Here we are talking about an individual workers or individual and how the person would decide whether to participate in the labor market or not. And if yes, how many hours the person would participate. Throughout the whole discussion in this textbook, it is based on a classical labor theories. So this chapter alone will be based on a neoclassical labor leisure model. There is a very interesting concept about this idea of neoclassical labor leisure model. This is a bit tangent of, of this chapter, but let me briefly explain to you. In a modern context now, when we say labor leisure, this term alone denotes the idea that there is a separation between labor and leisure. As if, if you work, you are depriving yourself of having fun to enjoy the work that you are doing Therefore, outside of your labor hours, that's 
the moment when you will enjoy your life, where you will have the leisure hours. This is a dichotomy that exists in the theory itself, at least from the term or title of this discussion, you know, labor, leisure model. There are many discussions about this, this concepts, especially when people talk about well-being in the job market today, the idea of work-life balance. Today, that's a hot topic. You, you may look into this topic for your assignment or for your project in, in writing your master thesis. Work-life balance arises when we look at work and leisure as two separate things. And it is also important to bring in the Islamic perspective here very briefly because Allah mentioned in Surah An-Naba, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim, Wa ja'alna al-layla libasa, Wa ja'alna al-nahara ma'asha. So this is Surah An-Naba, verse number 10 and 11 where Allah mentioned that Allah has made the night as libas, as a cloth that cover us. And Allah then also says that he has made the day as a time for us to find our provision. So this is what Quran describes among many other verses related to the division between time and work. Night is for us to rest, daytime is for us to work. This is in general. Doesn't mean you cannot work at night when you read this verse. However, because in Islam, we allocate the night especially to improve our spiritual condition where we want to get closer to Allah Ta'ala by performing the night prayers. That's a special moment. Nonetheless, Islam also look at work as a form of ibadah. Therefore, here we can see that work, if we do it lillahi ta'ala, and it is something halal, shari'ah compliant, it's something for us to enjoy because we are performing our duty of worship, work transformed into aman saleh, and that's something for us to cherish, to enjoy doing. All right, uh, there is a lot of psychological mindset we need to put correctly when we look into labor or work and leisure. However, that's a brief discussion. You may, we can discuss further on on this very philosophical dimension between labor leisure model here but what we want to see in this discussion is the neoclassical model so what we have here is the idea of how workers would derive some form of satisfaction from the consumption of real dollar value of goods and services which is how you can get this consumption you need to work when you work you are paid and with that money, you can buy goods and services for your consumption. And L is the hours of leisure given certain period. Therefore, in this model, we are saying that you, the utility derived by a particular worker is a function of his or her consumption expenditure and his leisure hours. Uh, very quickly revisit some properties of the indifference curve model where the indifference curve here is a downward sloping curve in in this case individual would prefer more of consumption and leisure because of the shape higher indifference curve would indicate higher level of utility because in the indifference curve analysis we will have the indifference map all right, so later we will see the diagram. Indifference curve doesn't intersect. And then the shape of the indifference curve is a convex shape or convexity, convex to the origin, where this is due to the shape of the 
utility function. Let's see this diagram. Notice here that there are two indifference curves shown in this diagram. Notice whenever you draw a diagram, you need to have a proper title and you need to put proper labels. Our vertical line here, we measure consumption level in terms of dollar value. And then on the horizontal line, we are measuring the hours of leisure. Now, uh, let's see this particular indifference curve. First, we see the shape of this indifference curve. It is a downward sloping curve. It is also a convex curve. I will not go to these properties because I believe you have learned in much detail in your microeconomics class. For each of these indifference curves, all points along the respective curve indicates the or the same level of utility. For example, this indifference curve has 25,000 utils, the unit use to measure utility, while the other indifference curve, the higher indifference curve, has 40,000 utils. Now let's consider this indifference curve where the horizontal line here measures the hours of leisure. I would say maybe we can say per week because in a week we have 168 hours, 24 times 7. Therefore, if we pick one point here, this particular worker spend 100 hours per week for leisure and he works about 68 hours because 168 minus 100. That hours work, 68 hours, enable him to buy $500 level of goods and services for his consumption. So he derived this point. We can derive this point on this indifference curve. Again, we are still on the same indifference curve. If we move to this point, this worker now is having more leisure and he works less than previously. And because of that, he can only afford $400 value of goods and services. But he got more leisure time. Therefore, there's a trade-off between the consumption level, 500 to 400, and then uh, the leisure hours. If the worker wants to have more leisure hours, he needs to forego some level of consumption. That's indicated by the downward sloping level of this indifference curve, the trade-off. Notice also that this point is better than these two other points because at this point, this worker is having much higher level of utility indicated by 40,000 level of utils as compared to 25,000 utils. At, at this higher point, this particular worker is working less hours because he got more leisure time, 150 hours leisure per week, and he is having $450 level of consumption of goods and services. Notice that in the context of indifference curve analysis, the higher the indifference curve we get, the higher the level of utility. All right, so this is some basic idea of the indifference curve. This diagram is to show to us that indifference curve must not intersect. This is a wrong way to draw the indifference curve analysis. Now, in this slide, we are interested to understand the concept of the slope of an indifference curve. This slope of indifference curve would indicate a very important uh, position for the worker later to make his optimal decision between work and leisure. To understand further, recall our utility function earlier. Utility for a worker is given by, or it is a function of consumption and leisure. Therefore, 
the marginal utility of leisure is defined as the change in utility resulting from an additional hours devoted to leisure holding consumption constant in short marginal utility of leisure indicates the the utility that arising from more hours of leisure while we let consumption level constant and given the same utility function we can also derive what we call the marginal utility of consumption if you like this consumption c should be a subscript so marginal utility of consumption is the change in utility for a dollar worth of consumption holding leisure constant so marginal utility of leisure and margin marginal utility of consumption should be a positive numbers because both are desirable and if we take two points let's say from point x to point y the slope between these two points would tell us the rate of which a person is willing to give up some leisure in return for additional consumption holding utility constant therefore the slope of an indifference curve shows how much additional consumption needed to bribe the person to forego some leisure change in leisure times marginal utility of leisure plus change in consumption times marginal utility of consumption should equal to zero what is this expression let's go back to this indifference curve and let's we indicate some point here let's say this is point x and this is point y so if you want to move from x to y you move from x to y meaning that you are having more leisure and you have to sacrifice some hours of work and because of that your level of consumption will be declining all right so that expression that i have sorry this one this expression change in leisure times marginal utility of leisure this one let's focus on this first shows us what's going on on this side of the diagram this part because we know that there is an increase in leisure hours so there is a change in leisure time times marginal utility of leisure i'm drawing using my mouse so this is not easy thing to do so that say this is marginal utility of leisure this expression is to capture how much there is a change in utility because of more hours spent for leisure we are interested to know how much there is change in utility what happened to your utility when you have more leisure utility utility should be higher but when you want to have higher or more le more leisure you are sacrificing your consumption because now you work less you have less money therefore your consumption declines and we want to know due to this decline and consumption in consumption how much utility has dropped or declined and that is given by this expression the other one change in consumption times the marginal utility of consumption all right 
what is what this expression tells us the change in utility because of the change in or decline in consumption while this one the change in uh, utility because of there's a change in leisure hours these two expression if we add them we plus them the net of these two should be zero because moving from x to y that results in the change here and also here happens along the same indifference curve so they are cancelling out one another that's why over here we say that right given these two expression plus it's equal to zero i hope you you follow that now moving on change in consumption over change in leisure is equal to the marginal utility of leisure over marginal utility of consumption and this is important because this is basically what we call a marginal rate of substitution this is how this expression gives us the marginal rate of substitution i i hope you recall your discussion on indifference curve why so or how we get to this point uh, we get to this point because remember change uh, going back to this expression and remember that when we draw our indifference curve all right so this is consumption on this side and then this is leisure if this is the indifference curve if I ask you to measure the slope of this indifference curve, you will say the slope is given by change in consumption divided by change in leisure. This is how we uh, calculate the slope of the indifference curve. So it should be equal to this one. My question now is, can you show or prove this is what you will get to do that going back to the, the first expression here remember this is equal to zero so what you can do as part of things i want you to try is to bring this expression change in consumption and change in leisure to the left side of the equation and move the others to the right side you do that rearrangement and you should get this results all right and this result is the the marginal rate of substitution or slope of the indifference curve because the indifference curve is a downward sloping curve you will get a negative number negative number here it should be negative uh, but we are interested to look at the absolute value the higher the number the steeper is the indifference curve and the the lower the number the smaller the number the flatter is your indifference curve next convexity of the indifference curve means that the slope is steeper when the person consume a lot of good consumption level and less or little of leisure you can think about this the slope of the indifference curve is flat or flatter when a person consume less consumption and a lot of leisure and then the convexity of the indifference curve is diminishing or it shows a diminishing marginal rate of substitutions since the slope would decline as we roll the indifference curve if you look at this indifference curve the slope becoming here is steeper and then it's becoming flatter as we roll the indifference curve we move from this point to the other point the other side of the indifference curve is getting flatter and that creates the convexity of the indifference curve and this convexity indicates the diminishing mrs in other words the mrs would first if you calculate the slope you get 
higher or bigger number and then as you go to the F, as you roll the indifference curve you get flatter curve and your MRS get smaller in this diagram we are looking at two different shapes of indifference curve because it indicates differences in preferences and this can be two different individuals but the only thing here you can imagine they are two different people and they have two different indifference curve they have different preferences between consumption and leisure the first person has what we call here a steeper indifference curve while the other one has much flatter indifference curve workers with steeper indifference curve would value their leisure relatively more than those workers with flatter or shallower indifference curve if i ask you given these two different preferences can you identify who is the lazier worker is it the steeper indifference curve or the flatter one think about that i think for this session that's what i want to discuss what we have done so far is we present the idea of preferences facing a worker using the utility function and in doing that we can also illustrate the utility function using the indifference curve analysis we learn how to derive the slope of the indifference curve we calculate the slope of the indifference curve and in this slide we argue that different workers may have different preferences therefore they will have different slope of indifference curve remember the discussion because we will bring this understanding to the next discussion where i will show you how to add budget constraint in the analysis thank you very much